Hello, my name's Rob, and welcome to another Honest Wargamer Army Masterclass. The list we'll be looking at today is an OCR Bone Reaper list that will make you hit yourself while it heals itself, and then it hits you again. It's actually super cool. <laughs> The new OCR Bone Reapers book is out, and while the high armor saves and the copious amounts of healing that the book does produce is going to be a real factor in competitive and tournament gaming, there's also ways to build some really fun and engaging lists that may also still be competitive, but definitely are super fun to play with and use. OCR Bone Reapers, if you aren't aware narratively, is an army led by the god Nagash. They go out and conquer the lands, and instead of just murdering everyone, instead they subjugate them and collect the bone tithe. They use these Taxed bones to build and construct themselves even more bone reapers. It's literally the fuel of the army. It's the backbone of the army. <laughs> That's worth subscribing for. And so when we're talking about the warriors or the units, just remember that they're constructed of the souls and the bones of their conquered enemies, which is actually really cool. The list that we're going to talk about, or the archetype that we're going to talk about today, has already gone 5-0 at an event. We're still very early into the OCR Bone Reapers book release and what the armies are going to look like at competitive play. Knowing that this list has already done very well at an event, especially played by a very competent OCR Bone Reaper player means that we are a little bit more confident talking about this as being an archetype. But we will cover some list variations at the end. I was lucky enough to interview the player who went 5-0 with this army, Michael Rausch. Which means I get to do harvester rolls. So I'm just rolling like buckets of dice, just do a whole lot of nothing for you. I can pull them off from over here on the side that's not on the objective. I can recur them onto the objective. He's a super fun and really engaging personality, and I really enjoyed interviewing him about the list and the army. If you'd like to go and look at that video, it's available on our Patreon, as are many other Masterclass interviews. The list we're going to look at is an aggressive melee castle build with great magical support and some really extensive healing. It plays similarly to how maybe you would play Thralls in Eidneth Deepkin or in a similar way to Nighthorn. However, unlike Nighthorn and unlike the Eidneth Deepkin, there's a special extra twist that this list has added on thanks to its sub-faction. At the time of recording this video, OCR Bone Reapers, as of yet, haven't featured enough in the stats, which we collect on TheHonestWarGamer.com, for us to tell you exactly how good the army is. But from personal experience, I think this army is really brilliant and most importantly would be something really, really fun to play down your local club. I'm not sure what we should name this list. Techless Castle Build makes a lot of sense, but this is like the Exploding Boner Boys and it's a good name, but I'm not sure I could use it for the internet. Hey Rob, what are you doing at the weekend? I'm going to play with the Exploding Boner Boys. I'll be using a lot of keywords, themes and ideas, which we've been developing on the Oswald Wargamer for quite a few years. I did a handy video for you to go check out on our YouTube previously, which will hopefully cover a lot of the basics that I'll cover here. But if you're not sure about anything, just ask in the comments and me or someone else will try and answer it. Taking a very quick look at the list, you can see that it's an OCR Bone Reapers army from the sub-faction Crematoriums. The general is a liege Cavalos with a command trait diversionary tactics. There's a Mortis and Oss effector with the artifact of power, the Gothazar Cartouche, and the aspect of the champion Tunnelmaster. And the named character, Arkan the Black fills out the hero slots. There are two units of 20 Mortec Guard armed with Naderite Blades, and three units of five Kavalos Death Riders also armed with Naderite Blades. And lastly, and a key piece we're going to talk about a lot, is the Gothazar Harvester. This isn't really relevant tactically or for anything really, but the Gothazar Harvester has like a crotch goblin or like a, a face bone crotch thing. It's uncomfortable, like it's gross. But it's really good in the game, so like, just avoid that. All of these units have been put into a battle regiment battalion, meaning it is a one drop and is very likely to get the choice to go first or give the first turn away. The OCR Bone Reapers roster isn't particularly broad. There aren't necessarily loads of units to take. And because of the way Games Workshop designs these battle turns sometimes, it's designed in line. I.e. the Mortec Guard work really well with the Gothazar Harvester, so you should take them together. Arkan's a really good caster, so you should definitely take him to buff pieces and and therefore, those pieces you take, like Mortec Guard, also fit in as well. But the real source for this army is when you combine that with some of the sub-faction abilities and also how those spells interact. So while on paper it might not look particularly interesting, it's actually a really exciting list with lots of really fun stuff going off. 
Right, we're gonna look at all the units in detail and then we're gonna put all of those combos and units together at the end of the video so you can work out how this army is gonna play because it's gonna play really fun and explosively. The battle traits, like an OCR Bone Reaper's army, then you gain access to some battle traits and these are just your army special rules and also you get a sub faction. I'm gonna quickly take you through the battle traits because actually most of them are really relevant for this army archetype and it's fun to cover them again, especially if you're new or if you haven't necessarily read up on how this army works. All OCR Bone Reapers armies are deathless warriors, so they have a six up ward save. All of their weapons, but not the mounts, not those horses, are made of Nadarite weapons, which means they have exploding sixes. These only happen in melee and it means every six that you roll to hit is gonna turn into two wound rolls. It means if you roll really really well you're doing a lot more damage because they're made of bone and stolen souls and constructed in a weird magical necromantic lab they have the special rule ranks unbroken by descent meaning that they do not take battle shock tests this is going to come in really important later and it also means they don't have to worry about keeping a cp for inspiring presence inspiring presence is a generic command ability that you can find in the core rulebook and it lets you ignore the effects of battle shock on one unit i say it's a solid general tactic that a lot of players have just keeping one CP to make sure that they can pass a very important battle shot test. However, not only do OCR Bone Reapers players get to ignore this, they also get a load of discipline points thanks to the Relentless Discipline special rule. However, while their hands are full of command points, they've got to ask themselves what they can do with all of this. And this is where the other battle trait for OCR Bone Reapers comes in, the ability to do a lot of their unique command abilities. Normally, command abilities are found either on a war scroll or inside of a book. And of course, there are the generic ones you can find in the core rules, but OCR Bone Reapers are able to do a bunch of unique ones and also issue multiple of the same command ability, which is actually very unique and unlike other armies. I mean, some armies can do it, like Pretenders in Sanesh and also Iron Jaws, but like it's still fairly unique. You can issue Retreat and Charge. You can add plus three inches onto a unit's movement. You can heal D3 wounds or return D3 slain models to a unit. You have plus one to wound in melee if an OCR Bone Reapers unit was charged. You can add plus one to the ward save of a unit using the Deathless Minions battle trait, meaning that one unit can have a five ward save, which is just amazing. You can give one unit plus one rend in combat, which is also great, and a unit can fight simultaneously as a hero. If we package up all the allegiance abilities, you can tell that what they're telling us to do is get into a fight as fast as possible, stay there, and do lots of damage. There are lots of sub-factions to choose from for OCR Bone Reapers. No Myriad lets you ignore spells pretty much all the time, which is incredible, and Petrifex Elite reduces the damage that's coming in. So why would we be talking about an archetype where you have exploding skeletons? The narrative for the sub-faction crematoriums is that these are the skeletons or the OCR Bone Reapers that are sent against armies and cities that Nagash wants completely burnt to the ground. Made up of dark magic and consumed by fire, when you touch them, they explode into balefire. All units in your army gain the special rule immolation. Each time you slay a model from a crematorium's OCR Bone Reapers army, you roll a number of dice equal equal to the wounds characteristic of that model, and then pick an enemy unit within three inches, and on a five up, you do a mortal wound. So if I kill one model with one wound, I'll roll one dice, and if I roll a five up, I'll do a mortal wound to a unit in three inches. If I have three wounds, for example, I'll roll three dice, and then statistically, or averagely, I should do one mortal wound. Now, I'm not normally a fan of abilities that you have to activate when your unit dies, specifically because this means that you're losing resources, and that normally feels like you're losing the game. However, thankfully, and when we get into it, this OCR Bone Reaper's army is able to cover over those fears for me with a load of recursion and healing. Right, let's look at the units in detail. The first unit we're gonna look at is Arkan the Black. The mummy, not that type of mummy, like a mummy, like Brendan Fraser mummy. The mummy, the ex-Tomb King, although he's gonna be mad that that's coming back, who brought Nagash back during the end times. As such, he's one of Nagash's most loyal servants. He's a support caster with an okay melee profile, which, when he does do damage in combat, allows him to heal up to six wounds each combat phase. Taking into account his 14 wounds and three up armor saves, this means that he can heal a lot, which is great, and also survive a lot, which is even better, because he's going to play quite an important piece as a support caster in the army. 
As a wizard, he casts three spells and gets plus two to cast those spells thanks to his staff of spirits. Being Nagash's best bud, he has a special rule called the First of the Mortarks. This allows him to add plus six inches to the range of spells for himself and other death wizards while wholly within 18 inches. And while part of a OCR Bone Reaper's army, he knows all of the spells from the Law of the Osiri, or what we would call a Law Master. So three spells, plus two to cast, plus six inches to the range, is pretty decent to start with as a caster. Don't forget, adding plus six inches to the range of spells will include the setup for endless spells and also realm spells. This is just really, really good. Mystic Shield at 18 inches is really good. And I think a lot of the spells that were written for the OCR Bone Reapers didn't take into account the fact that Arcan would be adding plus six inches to that range. His water spell has been famous throughout Age of Sigmar and it's called Curse of Years. It has the potential to spike a bunch of mortal wounds, but it's fairly unreliable. So it's probably not something you're going to choose to cast. Because Arcan has access to all of the spells from the Law of Osiri, it's worth talking about them as they're going to come up a couple of times as we talk through the list. Drain Vitality is a spell that you can cast on an enemy unit that's going to reduce their save by one and also make them minus one to hit. Empower Netherite Weapons takes the Netherite Weapons that you use in melee to have exploding sixes and makes it happen on fives. Reinforced Constructs lets you have a four up ward save against mortal wounds. And Soul Release makes it so that you can't deep strike within 12 inches of of this caster. While the ward save against mortal wounds and stopping deep strikes is going to come in important in some matchups, the spells you're most likely going to be casting are going to be Mystic Shield, Drain Vitality, and Empower Naderite Weapons. This is because it plays into how your army wants to play. Plus one save on a unit is phenomenal, especially to make them more survivable. Drain Vitality means you're going to kill more of the enemy, which is also great. And Empower Naderite Weapons does the same, making your killer units more killy. The last ability we're going to talk about for Arcan is the Mortark of the Sacrament ability. This just has a lot of words, but what it basically means is you can pick three different units in your hero phase and you can either heal three wounds or return up to three wounds worth of models. In reality, this means three Mortec Guard or one Kavalos Death Rider, but it also means you can heal heroes three as well, so it's quite good. Healing nine wounds across your army each hero phase is honestly really cool. There are ways also to bring back Stalkers and Immortus Guard, but that's a different type of archetype, which definitely is worth covering because the Immortus Guard list is very good. So Arkan can heal himself, heal the rest of the army, provides incredible support spells to most of your army, great spell range, and also great anti-magic. It's just an absolute bargain piece and is really useful in this army. I feel like choosing the right spells and also using Arkan in the right way is going to be the crutch of making some of this army work well. Understanding the matchups and knowing when to try and stop deep strikes and when to put ward saves on units is going to come in pretty clutch, but it also doesn't feel over the top and just feels like a really well written war scroll and definitely worth taking. The Mortison Ossifector, I've definitely nailed the name, is a support hero that greatly increases the melee output of the army. A one cast wizard that will buff the Gothazar Harvester in the list. It does this in one of three different ways. You can either improve the rend of a Gothazar Harvester's melee attacks, make it ignore the first wound or mortal wound that it takes it in each phase, or give it exploding attacks. Of the three, ignoring the first wound it takes in each phase seems like the one that you're going to use the most. This is because the Gothasar Harvester is going to play a pivotal role in the army, and you want to keep it alive as long as possible. We'd even describe the Gothasar Harvester in this list as the pivot point, but we'll talk more about that later. Being able to support the Gothasar Harvester is pretty good, but it's not the reason that you would take the Oss Effector in your army. The reason is, is because the Oss Effector is the only hero in the Bone Reaper book book that's able to take the artifact, the Gothazar Cartouche. It's said that the Cartouche is made from the bones of a fallen Chaos Lord, which is honestly pretty cool. And what it does is it adds plus one to wound to the melee attacks of Oseart Bone Reaper units wholly within nine inches. This is what we call an economies of scale buff. This means it affects loads and loads of stuff. So just taking this means your whole army is plus one to wound. Normally you'll spend a command point on a unit for all out attack, giving it just plus one to hit. This is multiple units and multiple attacks gain plus one to wound. Then it's just incredibly effective and efficient. Suspiciously also, you're only able to put this on the Oss Effector and the Oss Effector is the new model that was released with this book. I mean, it's not suspicious. It's just they wanted you to buy this model. Why can only this guy take the cartouche? Does no one else like cartouches? Are you telling me a liege Cavalos is like, no cartouches for me, thank you. I'm not a cartouche guy. However, staying wholly within nine inches of your melee front line can be quite difficult, especially when this model only moves five inches. And so we've taken the unique aspect of the champion Tunnel Master. That's a unique enhancement that you're able to take during this GHB leading up to the summer of 2023. 
It effectively allows you to deep strike the model, which is pretty cool, means it can keep up with your melee front line. The Ossifect is going to be right in the middle of the fight, casting a spell, and also making it so that everyone has got plus one to wound, which is honestly really, really big. The general in the army is a Liege Cavalos, which is a frontline commander on a horse, basically. That's what the narrative is for them. A mobile frontline character with a good armor save of three plus and seven wounds, and an okay melee profile, which means making it the general means that you probably be able to achieve the battle tactic to kill something with your general. As we talked about, OCR Bone Reapers already gain a lot of command points. And thanks to the Will of the Legion's ability, this Liege Cavalos can issue one command to a friendly OCR Bone Reapers unit once per turn for free as well. Endless Duty is a unique command ability that the Liege Cavalos can cast. No, command. Command ability they can command. This adds plus one attack to the melee profile of an OCR Bone Reapers unit until the next hero phase. This is awesome, especially if you stack it on things like your Mortec Guard or your Cavalos Death Riders, because that's a lot of extra attacks. And you get a free CP, so you're going to do it for free, which is awesome. Because he's the general, you're allowed to take a command trait, and the command trait taken was Diversionary Tactics. This is actually really big, especially when combined with the terrain feature or faction terrain that you get free with your OCR Bone Reaper's army. I mean, it's not free, buy it, but you don't have to pay points for it, is what I mean. This command trait means that you subtract three from charge rolls for enemy units while they're within 12 inches of this general. It means that if you want to charge any of the OCR Bone Reaper per units, then you need to roll a minimum of a six. You're going to use this to bodyguard your other units effectively, making it so your opponent fails a bunch of charges. Especially good for deep striking units to stop them from being able to achieve those nine inch charges. It's just very, very strong. When you sit on the tabletop, you'll really realize how effective it is, but it's awesome. Not if you're playing against it, but definitely good for the OCR Bone Reaper player. So quick wrap up, plus one attack, free CP, and you have to add plus three inches to your charges while you're within 12 inches of this general. There are two units of 20 Mortec Guard in this army, and these are your frontline battle line units. To quote my friends over at Total War, these are your hold the line units, but they're also pretty fighty. They come in units of 10 and they're one wound each with a four up armor save. The standard bearing the unit allows you to add plus one to run and charge rolls, and they have a command ability baked into their war scroll, which can only be issued by their unit champion, the Mortec Hecatos. This allows you to ignore the positives or negative modifiers to the unit save roll, meaning you'll always just have the four up armor save. So four up base save with a six up ward save is pretty good. However, what's quite nice about this is it lets you choose. If you're coming up against a unit that's got a lot of attacks with no rend, then you're going to want to put a mystic shield down and then do all out defense. That means you'll have a three up armor save ignoring rend one. However, this is resource heavy and you may just want to have that flat four up armor save against things like rend two because the math just works out the same. But don't forget the OCR Bone Reaper's special ability to add plus one to your ward rolls so you could have a five up ward save. The survivability of the unit is something we're going to talk about loads when we talk about the Gothazar Harvester in the minute. But the quick roundup for this unit is that they're slow, but you can add to that movement. They're very survivable and they can do a lot of damage. Gothazar Harvester is just that. It's a harvest machine, but it harvests bones and dead bodies to re-knit and reconstruct the warriors on the battlefield. This plays out in the rules and the Harvester is a support piece that generates a lot of healing and also is a pretty good frontline fighter. It moves six inches, which is fine because it's going to be keeping up with the slower infantry that moves four inches. It's got 10 wounds with a four up save and this is probably its biggest weakness. It's a pretty important linchpin in this army, as we're going to get to in a minute, and it's pretty killable. Sure, you can give it a 5-up ward save, sure, you can give it a Mystic Shield, and this is probably going to be the target for your Mystic Shield in the army. But 10 wounds isn't a lot to play with, and it can die, and that is going to be very sad times. It's pretty good in close combat, which is important, because every time it kills something, it's going to be able to heal some models around it, which is the thing we should talk about now. It has the ability Bone Harvest. Each time a model is slain within 6 inches of a Gothazar Harvest, Harvester. You can roll a four plus and you can pick a OCR Bone Reapers unit within six inches and you can heal or return a number of models equal to the size of the model that you killed. If a model with a wound characteristic of four or less was slain within six inches, you would return one model or heal one model within six inches of the Harvester. If the model that dies has five or more wounds, you could heal up to three wounds or you could return a model with up to three wounds or three individual one wound models. You always have to do healing first, so if a unit 
unit's got a couple of wounds on it, you've got to do that first before you can return any slain models. But in the case of things like Mortec Guard, they're only one wound, so you're always returning slain models. This is actually crazy. The math on this is really fun. Due to the way this activates, this increases the survivability of units insanely. But we do have to understand how damage is applied and at what steps this is going to work for us to really get the effectiveness out of it. Now I know this is gonna get a little bit techy, but I promise you the payoff is super worth it because you're gonna do some crazy stuff. And don't forget, exploding skeletons. Let's look at how damage is applied. In Age of Sigmar, you roll to hit, and then you roll to wound. And then you make a save roll, depending on whether or not your opponent has rend or not. If the damage is only damage one, you'll make one ward save. If the damage is damage three, you'd make three ward saves. After the ward saves, that's how much damage you apply to the unit. And then you either take that number of wounds off a model, or you take away that many wounds worth of models. Let's look at an example to make this a little bit easier. After rolling to hit and rolling to wound, I do 10 damage to attacks. We armor save four of them, which means the six attacks that go through become 12 damage because six passed our armor save and they were damaged too. Then that 12 damage goes into the ward save and we have a ward save of six plus and on average we should save two, which means we get 10 damage allocated to our unit. This is where the Gothazar Harvester is going to be what we need to talk about. You remove each individual model one by one and the way the Gothazar Harvester's ability is worded is you remove one and then you roll a four plus. You roll that four plus if it's within six inches and if you successfully roll it, you just return that model back to the unit. It. This means even though we've done 10 damage, we should, on average, roll 5 and put 5 back into the unit. I don't know if your brain has cottoned on yet, but this means you have to do an insane amount of damage to a unit of, let's say, Mortec Guard with a Gothazar Harvester backing them up to actually wipe out the unit. In fact, we did some quick, dirty math. It takes 96 damage 1 wounds to kill a unit of 20 Mortec Guard near a Gothazar Harvester, or 120 if they have used the five up ward command ability. This is this is where I'm just getting the microphone because this is the important part. That's survivable, it's exciting, it's fun. But these aren't regular skeletons. These are the big bumba. These are the exploding skeletons, the big bads, the booms. This is where it gets super spicy. We need to add a step into this because don't forget, we're playing crematoriums and our job is to explode. Going back to our earlier example, every time we remove a model before we remove it, we would roll a five plus to do a mortal wound to a unit within three inches. Then we would roll a four plus to see if we return that model. This means from our example, when 10 was slain, this means we roll 10 dice and we do two to three mortal wounds. So we lose five, but you take three mortal wounds. If we were fighting a unit with only one wound each, each time we applied that mortal wound, we may kill a unit, which would activate our Gothazar Harvester's ability, meaning that we could heal even more of our Mortec Guard. But what's crazy about this also is that we assume that we're only receiving damage and then we're not doing any damage back apart from the murder rolls. Yet 41 attacks from a unit of 20 Mortec Guard. However, the Gothazar Cartouche is going to add plus one to wound rolls. The Leech Cavalos is going to give us an extra attack, taking us up to 61 attacks. And if we use the Bludgeon Command ability, we're going to be at Ren 2. That's 61 attacks, hit on threes, wound on threes, Ren 2, damage one, with exploding sixes. That's if we haven't cast Empower Naderite Weapons, which is going to give us exploding fives. So those 20 Mortec Guard are also doing a lot of damage. And guess what? Everything that they kill within six inches of the Harvester is also going to heal the Mortec Guard. This combination is crazy, like it's crazy. It's good in other armies where you can have plus one save, especially if you bring Catacross, which is another archetype we'll talk about in the future. But the way in which the Harvester interacts, and especially at what steps it activates, means that these units are nuts. Lastly, let's talk about the three Kavalos Death Rider units in the army. And a neat bit of lore is that anyone that annoyed, betrayed, or let down a gash gets turned into one of the horses that the Kavalos Death Riders ride, which is kind of fun and neat and means I don't necessarily want to cross him unless you're like a horse guy. So they come in units of five and their movement 10, three wounds each on a four up armor save. They have plus one to run and charge thanks to the standard bearer. And when they make a charge roll, they have the ability unstoppable charge, which is you roll a number of dice equal to the charge roll. So let's say 10 and any five ups will do a mortal wound to a unit within an inch. When you charge, you also get to pile in an additional three inches, which means this unit can be very, very fast and in places you weren't expecting it to be. To add to that, they have a unique command ability on their war scroll called the Death Rider Wedge. This is a command ability that is used in the charge phase. And until the end of the charge phase, you can ignore units with models that have three or 
less wounds in it when you're moving in the charge phase. So you basically could just fly over infantry and other stuff, which is legit really super cool. And also with a six inch pile in, mean this unit is gonna be somewhere you weren't expecting, applying mortal wounds to that unit. Let's not forget as well that when you do kill one of these models, they have three wounds, so you're gonna be rolling three crematorium rolls. So if you are able to wipe out the whole unit, which is gonna be pretty interesting when they can have a four up armor save and a five up ward, it means that you're gonna take five mortal wounds back for the privilege. If you kill a couple of models and don't kill them all, Arkan's gonna be able to put one horse back into each Kavalos Death Rider unit in each of the OCR Bone Reaper's hero phases. So the healing and recursion is really good. The damage that you do in the charge phase with the mortal wound impact hits is also not dependent on how many models are in the unit. So as long as there's just one Kavalos Death Rider alive, you're gonna be doing mortal wound impact hits, which is pretty good. So a relatively fast, very survivable combat piece, which is gonna do damage to you if you kill it, they're really excellent. It's worth quickly talking about the terrain piece or the faction piece that you get for OCR Bone Reapers because it really compounds two amazing abilities that you get in this army. In the hero phase, you get to choose an ability from this terrain piece. And the two that are important are the punishment of agony and the punishment of lethargy. The punishment of agony can make a enemy unit minus one to hit, which is gonna combine really well with a spell that makes a unit minus one to hit as well. This really is just gonna reduce the effectiveness of a combat unit going into your army. Although do you really want that? Because I'm sure you want a crematorium explode all over them. The punishment of lethargy though is incredibly good. This adds plus three inches to the charge roll for an enemy unit. Combine this with the command trait that the general has got, this means that they're gonna get an extra plus six inches to their charge roll. Meaning that even if they're within three inches of your units, they're gonna have to roll a nine. This makes the army just that bit more survivable, which is very effective. Meaning you can choose the engagements, which is really good. And you've got a lot of healing just in case some of those elements go wrong. Okay, so we know how the list works. It's gonna shut down charges and maybe make it so that your army is more defensive. But once you get into combat, it's going to punish you for doing so. And it's gonna heal most of that punishment that you dish out. Let's talk about how to use this army or the strategy for using this army. And it's really gonna work in one of two ways. It's either gonna work as a two wave melee castle or a hammer and anvil style army. In the first example, you're going to take the Kavalos Death Riders and push them up the board, pinning the enemy in and healing those Death Riders and doing mortal wounds to key enemy pieces. Don't forget, you've got access to retreat and charge. So while you may hit some of those front lines of the enemy first, you'll be able to retreat and get into the other parts of the army which they weren't expecting. All the while, the Gothazar Harvester, the Os Effector, and also the Mortec Guard will be moving into the mid board and holding objectives. Alternatively, you could do it another way. You could move your big bomber skeleton castle into the middle of the board, backed up by the Os Effector and the Harvester, and make it so your opponent has to hit you. Then, when stuck on your front lines of exploding, undying skeletons, which is an anvil, but a fiery anvil, it means you can then hammer and strike from the sides with your Kavalos Death Riders. Here we can see some example deployments. The important part is to keep both units of the two Mortec Guard in range of the Gothazar Harvester, which should be sideways. The Os Effector should be near them as well, making sure they have plus one to wound. Arkin can be at the back of the board holding your home objective because he can cast spells from quite a significant range. Meanwhile, you can flank or hold other objectives with your Kavalos Death Riders. This army is gonna work really well into armies looking to do lots of melee damage. Iron Jaws, Soulblight, like Grave Lords and Corn are all going to do a lot of combat damage and then suffer for doing it. Let's talk about how to beat the list, and the answer is really easy. It's shooting, lots of shooting. That's pretty much the answer to everything in Age of Sigmar, but being able to shoot the Gothazar Harvester is going to really reduce how effective this army is. That's why earlier on I described it as the linchpin of the army, because it's literally the lodestone around which those Mortec Guard work. However, in order to get to them, you're probably gonna to have to go to do three waves of Kavalos Death Riders, and maybe even a Leech Kavalos. But if you've got some guns, you can just shoot them, and the Harvester can just go down. In that match, up, it's going to be really important to make sure you put the Mystic Shield and the Ward Save on the Harvester to make sure it's as survivable as possible. Thinking about variations on the list, and honestly more Harvesters seems to make a lot of sense. I quite like the idea of a unit of 20 Mortec Guard backed up by an individual Harvester going and grabbing their own objectives. But of course you can just go to the silly numbers, 30 Mortec Guard, a Harvester, 
and that unit will just probably never, ever, ever die. But I really do feel like 20 is definitely enough. So two harvesters, two 20s already feels pretty good, but it is a thousand points of a 2000 point list. So while it sounds amazing on paper, you are paying the points for making those things happen. In conclusion, this is a wonderful army. A wonderful army list and a wonderful army with loads of different ways to take the army as well. Also a great opportunity to paint skeletons, not skeletons, make them into little fire demons, which is quite cool. I like the idea of that. There could be some very fun opportunities for some really good paint jobs. And honestly, just sounds really engaging to play against. I'm sure frustrating if you charge into it and try to beat it up and they just explode all over you and don't die, but it's pretty fun. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any thoughts on this armor list, please do leave it in the comments below. As always, I'd like to thank everyone on the Honest Wargamer Patreon who support the show enough that I can keep creating content like this. If you like it, I'd love you to join Patreon as well. That would be awesome, and it means I can make more content and hopefully stuff you like. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for being Honest Wargamers. Gamers.